Hi everyone, welcome back to Live Darts with me, Phil Bars. It's that time again and we're going to preview the Bet Victor World Cup of Darts. The Premier League seems an age away now, but we're going to jump straight back in to the live action this week, the 6th to the 9th of May, Hamburg, the Barclay Card Arena, the Bet Victor World Cup of Darts. It's a fan's favourite tournament, this one. It's unique. We get a pairs format in the only PDC event. Thrills, drama, just pure entertainment, this. We've seen elation, we've seen deflation in this over the years. Some of the best TV moments have happened at the World Cup and let's run you through the action. First up, 32 countries will compete to be crowned the World Cup champions. Uh, eight seeds, but the seedings don't really mean a lot in this. It goes out the window. It's great. We've got new pairs for the first time. We've got people making their World Cup debuts. It's all changed this year in the World Cup of Darts. So, top eight seeds, England seeded one which will be Rob Cross and Michael Smith for the first time. Exciting pair for England. Seeded two, uh, Scotland, Gary Anderson and Peter Wright. If Gary's fit and firing, Scotland will be a huge danger here in the World Cup. Number three, Wales, uh, Gerwin Price and Johnny Clayton. We'll talk about the Welsh pair a little bit more, but exciting times for the Welsh. Uh, seeded four, Holland, all changed. No Raymond van Barneveld this year. Got Michael Van Gerwen and Jermaine Watamina uh, making his debut. Jermaine just getting better and better, rising the rankings and fully deserves his place in Team Holland. Then from there, Australia seeded five. One of the seeds that are in danger, I feel, but we'll cover that again when we look at the odds. Uh, Northern Ireland, six. Interesting pair. Brendan Dolan producing some form on the Euro Tour to go with Premier League finalist um, Daryl Gurney. So that'll be interesting. Then from there, number seven is Belgium. I like the look of Belgium, I have to say, big price. We'll talk about them in the odds as well. And last is Austria, which is Mentor Sudovic and Zoltan Lurchbacher. So that's the top eight seeds. But don't be fooled, there is plenty of um, quality in depth in this tournament. Seedings out the window, out there somewhere. We've seen Spain shock England before. We've seen Singapore dump the Scots out. Anything can happen in the World Cup of Darts. Right, let's run you through the betting odds. Uh, tournament favourites join England and Holland, both 3-1. to one. Not sure if Holland should be favourites. They obviously, they're in there because of Michael Van Gogh and we all know this. But all new for Jermaine on his day, absolutely brilliant. But we also know there's an 88 average in there from Jermaine. So it will all depend, can someone take advantage of when that happens. Second favourites, 4-1 to one, Scotland. Quite like the price of the Scots. But it all revolves around how is Gary Anderson's elbow. Uh, I was with him in Edinburgh to do some exhibitions. He was wearing a band um, for like tennis elbow. He thinks it'll be fine come then, having treatment on it. And if it, if it is, beware of the Scots. Four to one, big price. Then from there, the Welsh, seven to one. Now, a month ago, I loved the look of the Welsh. However, if you follow Gazzy Price on Snapchat and Instagram, as we record this on a Tuesday morning, he is still in Miami. It's a big risk. Jet lag could play a huge factor going into the World Cup. I believe he lands tomorrow morning, or maybe Thursday, I don't know, because of the flight, and then he's going straight out to Hamburg. It's a huge gamble. I was going, it's ready information, I'm not telling any secrets. If you follow him on Instagram, um, he's still in Florida um, on a family holiday. Big, big gamble. I say, like I say, jet lag, tiredness could all play a huge factor in the Welsh. Don't get me wrong, if they're fit and firing, they're a huge danger and 7-1 to one is a monster price, I think. So a little bit of value each way on the Welsh, if everything is okay. Then from there, Northern Ireland, 14-1. to one. Not a bad outside price again. Like we said, Brendan Dolan found some form on the Euro Tour, found a couple of big averages, along with Daryl Gurney, who has been Mr. Consistent this year. They could be a little bit of a threat. Then from there, Belgium, 25-1. to one. I like the look of this bet. I think there's value at 25-1. to one. We all know Dimitri Vandenberg comes alive on that big stage. We all know it. He can be playing awful. Put him on a stage, he comes alive. We'll see ton plus averages. Again, Kim Hybrex has played really well all year. Maybe hasn't got the results his performances deserve, but they are a pair that are in form, and the chemistry between them is amazing. Now, that's something that plays a huge part in team sport is the camaraderie and the chemistry has to be good. Now, Belgium have that. So 25 to 1 could be a shout. Then from there, the home pair Germany, 33 to 1. 
Can the crowd pull them through? My opinion, Martin Schindler isn't playing well enough to get them through um, to the latter stages. I'm talking quarterfinals and semi-finals. So I think it could be a bit of a disappointment for the German crowd this weekend. Then from there, another outsider, Poland, 80 to 1. Yes, 80. We all know what Ratajski can do on his day. Won back-to-back -back Pro Tours last year. Sensational player. And along with Titus Kanik, who again, who has played well on the Euro Tour at times this year, 80 to 1. Poland could be a huge outside danger to any of the seeds. Then last up, Ireland, 80 to 1 again. Willie O'Connor won a Pro Tour this year. Steve Lennon, we all know, is a fantastic player. Not had the same impact that he had last year, but again, if they hook it up and play well, Ireland could be and could be a threat. Right now, we're going to run you through the ones to watch outside the seeds. Um, like we said, Ireland, Steve Lennon, and Willie O'Connor, huge danger. I feel if they get it right, the Philippines have England in round one. Now we all know Wayne Mardle has tipped the Philippines to shock England. It's a big call. However, uh, Lawrence Alagan and Noel Malik them. No mugs. We saw that at the World Championships. Both of them know their, rain, know their way around the Noki. And England will have to be at their very best if they are to beat the Philippines. It is a potential banana skin, but I think England will just get over the line. Um, then from there, like we touched on Poland before as well in the Osbit. Massive danger. I say Ratajski on his day can be sensational. Then we're going to go Singapore. We all know Paul Lim and Harathlin. Paul Lim, he just comes alive again. The ever young Paul Lim, they'd beaten Scotland only a few years ago and shocked the world. You wouldn't be surprised if they did it again. But they've got the Welsh. It could be the huge upset. Let's wait and see. Spain, Elson and Reyes, again, always tough to beat. Good camaraderie between the pair. And they've caused World Cup upsets before. And have to give a special mention to Sweden. Magnus Karras retiring, hanging up his darts after the World Cup. What a servant he's been to Swedish darts and darts around the world. So that, I'm sure that will be an emotional time on the hockey for the Swedes when they depart. Right, pick of the first round games for us. Wales versus Singapore. Like we said, so many factors going into this game. Oh, it, could be it could be electric. The Welsh will have to bring their A game if they are to get over this round one banana skin. Like we said, it's pairs only in the first round. That's the key to this. They're not used to doing it, so it will be interesting. Can Singapore cause an upset? Over to you guys. The next one, Wales versus the Philippines. Oh, sorry, England versus the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, like we said, Michael Smith making his debut this year. I like the makeup of the England pair. You've got Michael Smith, big scorer. Rob Cross, big scorer. And Rob hitting doubles at the moment. I'm sure that will rub off on Michael Smith as well. I don't think the Philippines will be England. I think they'll push them, but I just think the English pair will have too much in round one. Then from there, Australia against Finland. I picked this out because for me, Australia are one of the seas that are in danger right now. Simon Whitlock and Kyle Anderson aren't playing anywhere near their best right now. Kyle is so up and down at the moment. When he's good, it's 100, 110 averages. Whitlock has struggled this year on tour. So they're going to need to find something if they are to get over this banana skin. Like we say, it's all about getting over round one because then you can play some singles. But potential banana skin this one, I feel. Spain against Holland. It's all new for the Dutch. How will Michael play with Jermaine? How will Jermaine react to playing for his country for the first time? Spain, been there, done it. And they're just a solid pair. Holland are obviously going to be huge favourites, but if they're slightly off, like we all know Michael is vulnerable at times, and we don't know how Jermaine's going to react, this game could be fascinating and one to watch in round one. Then from there, Scotland against Denmark, all eyes on the returning Gary Anderson. We haven't seen him on a TV since the UK Open. When he played well, in, in fairness to him, just got beaten by Steve Beaton, who was better on the day, but that's a real intriguing one. In the comments below, drop who you think will win the World Cup, who's your one to watch is, and who's the shocks in round one when it is pairs only. Uh, I'm flying out to Hamburg on Thursday to keep you up to date with all the action. But remember, if you can't watch it, follow us at Live Darts, all social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and the website. We will have everything covered that you need to know with the Bet Victor World Cup over the four-day tournament. Remember, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
hit the bell, turn notifications on so you never miss anything here at Live Darts. And we'd like to thank you all for your continued support and we'll see you in Hamburg. Thanks everyone. Mm.